In a world of technology, the future is online. Tune in to www.radiobuamasi.com. Radiobuamasi.com. Welcome to Radio Bulamasti. I'm your host Aisha, and uh, with me I have um, Peppa Prasad, and uh, <laughs> we have a special um, conversation going on today. We have uh, Melissa Hans with us, joining us uh, on uh, line, and uh, we want to welcome you all. You can listen to our programs via um, our through our radio www.radiobulamasti.com or also on ibmtv.ca. So, uh, Praveen, uh, we've got a special interview today. Yes, we got Melissa Hans uh, sharing her story of how she lost her husband to COVID. Uh, now, Melissa, I just want to thank you very much for coming on Radio Bulamasti to share your story. I know that this story is um, is not easy for you to share and you know and i i just want to thank you very much for you know coming on air and and really you know shedding some light on on what really you know this you know this um covid 19 is all about we 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 there's you know this pandemic is worldwide mm -hmm. and um, it is sad to see how many people have lost their lives and right now in BC, there's more people in ICU and in the in the hospital right now than I, than ever. Yes. And uh, you know, uh, our condolences to all of those that have lost their family members that are fighting in the hospital right now, that are at home and trying to isolate, struggling at home as well. So prayers goes out uh, to go uh, to everyone. And uh, once again, um, you know, our condolences to all those that have lost their loved ones. Uh, due to COVID. So, Melissa, once again, welcome, and uh, I'll let you take over, uh, Pepper. So, Melissa, um, give us some background. I just want everybody to know, I mean, you do have some Fijian roots, right? I do. Hi. Thank you for having me, ladies. You're, You're welcome. very welcome, Melissa. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. That's good, and very, very sorry for your loss. And <laughs> Thank uh, you. Melissa, you are, you're not originally from Fiji Island, are you? I am not, uh, okay. but both of my parents um, were born uh, one in Suva and one in Latoka. So oh, it's, your uh, it's, it's, it's definitely in us. And uh, we had planned a big Fiji reunion uh, mm -hmm. last year. And um, of course, uh, due to the pandemic, um, everything was halted. But it would have been our first, well, we were all going to go as a family. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was a trip that never uh that never happened. It's unfortunate. And Melissa, you are here locally in uh, in BC. Yeah, that's correct. All right. Okay. And uh, how's uh, things with you right now? Um, you know, it's it's day by day. It's uh, it was three weeks uh, yesterday uh, that I lost my husband, and uh, you know, there's ups and there downs. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's hard to be strong all the time because mm -hmm. I have two little ones to to look after and. Mm -hmm. uh, I know mom can't be strong all of the time and I have mm -hmm. moments of just breaking down and, and crying all the time and that's just normal with grief. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have, you know, two of the greatest kids ever um, and uh, they're, we're, 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 we're coping as a family and we're, we're getting by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So M Melissa, you know, once again, so very, very sorry for your loss. Now, um, how old was your husband? Um, yeah, he was uh, 46. His birthday is coming up May wow. 14th. So he would have been 47 uh, mm -hmm. just uh, next Friday. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about you share a little bit about how life was before and then what happened and how how did this start and, and your experience? Um... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, our story, a, a typical family of four, you know, doing uh, our best. Uh, to, to live with the pandemic mm -hmm. um, with all of the restrictions and the guidelines you know we were following all of them it's mm -hmm. not that we were out frivolous doing things that we couldn't or weren't allowed to do mm -hmm. um, you know so we were out in in the community as safely as possible mm -hmm. um, it was uh, over spring break in which uh, we had contracted it um, you know um, from somewhere in the community uh, we isolated um, when we went to uh, get the initial tests, 
uh, three out of four of us had tested positive. So myself and my two boys had tested positive and, and my husband was negative. And, and that just made sense to us is, you know, I'm, I'm taking the boys to the summer camps, uh, mm -hmm. you know, during the day and, and he's off to work. So, you know, we were kind of led different lives, right? Like I was the mom at home and, and working at home and, and taking the kids out. And mm -hmm. then he was working and, and doing what he was doing at work. Mm -hmm. So it was a surprise, but it wasn't a surprise. But you just, you don't even know at mm -hmm. that point, mm -hmm. right? So then we were advised once we had got the positive test, um, you know, to try and self-isolate from uh, my husband as best as we could in our house. So we were all wearing masks. Um, you know, we did our due diligence and we notified all of the uh, few families that we were in contact with. Mm -hmm. Again, nothing major as far as socially hanging out or anything, mm -hmm. but you know, you do the odd um, assist with carpool to take our kids to camp. You mm -hmm. just, you know, you do the mom thing and everybody mm -hmm. is wearing masks in the car. And, you know, even though the, the, the time with, with um, the other child is like literally six, six minutes or seven mm -hmm. minutes, mm -hmm. you know, you feel horrible mm -hmm. um, at, at feeling that you may have possibly, you know, infected so somebody else. Right. Um, but that's how we got it. Somebody mm -hmm. infected us somehow, mm -hmm. you know, by, by however means. So Melissa, so, what, uh, yeah. what made you decide to go for a test? What kind of signs or symptoms did you have? Well, we didn't have any symptoms. And so mm -hmm. we were actually notified um, by another family. So mm -hmm. uh, they gave us the heads up um, and said that uh, we were tested positive And because we were in contact, mm -hmm. um, she had recommended that we go. And so we did, mm -hmm. uh, but we were asymptomatic. Um, you know, I mean, the kids have had a runny nose and sneezing and mm -hmm. what have you. And I feel that kids have a cough like all year round. Mm -hmm. That's just the nature of being in elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that we did have kind mm -hmm. of leading up to that or even during um, our positive testing isolation mm -hmm. wasn't out of the ordinary, you know, and you look at the COVID symptoms and it's they're so vague to me. Everybody mm -hmm. has a runny nose, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you're kind of told as long as it's not yellow or green, you mm -hmm. don't have a sickness, mm -hmm. right? And then sneezing isn't listed as one of the, the symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. And so none of us had a fever. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, the COVID signs. Mm -hmm. None of us had like the chills. None of us had all like the regular headaches and fatigue and all the other stuff that is so supposedly listed as, as a COVID sign. Mm -hmm. um, so it was only until we got our results back that it, you know, wow. we were like, okay, we are positive. Let's just um, do what we have to do and hunker down and isolate mm -hmm. as best as we can from my husband. Mm -hmm. Again, we were all wearing masks and um, they had told him only go get tested if you feel that you're coming down with anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone who has a family knows if one person has something, it, it's, it's just evident that mm -hmm. the rest of the family are going to follow suit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, about a week into okay. our sort of isolation period, um, Again, the kids were completely fine. Nothing out of the ordinary. Still just being rambunctious little boys doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a runny nose and they mm -hmm. had a cough, mm -hmm. but it was nothing like what is supposedly, you know, described as a symptom. It was mo more so of a clearing of the throat, so, you know, and sorry. So even after you got the result and, and you tested positive, you di still didn't feel anything. No, not well, I did, but not as bad as, as my husband. And it was only like two days where I felt like really congested, mm -hmm. really, it, it was more like a head cold for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you know, as far as like fatigue or anything, yeah, I felt run down, but it wasn't anything like I hadn't felt before, like when you have bronchitis or mm -hmm. when you have like the flu per okay. se, right? Mm -hmm, yes. um, I did lose my sense of smell and taste for about mm -hmm. two days. So mm -hmm. that is very real. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I would often test the theory because I mean, I'm, I, I love hot sauce on everything and I would just pour mm -hmm. the hot sauce on all my foods. Yeah. I couldn't mm -hmm. yeah. smell it, couldn't taste it, but I could certainly feel the burning sensation on my tongue. Uh -huh. And, you know, it was evident that, you know, the sensory was there, but I couldn't taste it, couldn't smell anything. Mm -hmm. And that was only for about two days. Um, as we were nearing the end of isolation period for us, mm -hmm. again, my husband then started developing like a cough and he oh. never really coughs. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a, like a, um, like a heavier cough than ours. So it, it, he did clearly have a cough. Mm -hmm. That's when we had said, okay, you may as well go get tested. Yes. You know, we're, I'm sure you're positive, but at least if we get the results, we can take our masks off. We can isolate as a family, you mm -hmm. know, like if we can get through this together. Mm -hmm. So sure enough, he goes and he gets tested and within 24 hours, he gets his results. He is positive. Oh, um, so then we just continue doing what we're doing, you know, like we're taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. We're at home. We're still sanitizing, washing our hands. But Reed's symptoms started getting progressively worse as far as, again, no fever, mm -hmm. but he yeah. had more flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. He did have the chills. For someone super fit and super healthy, he was 
getting fatigued Mm -hmm. and you know it just it wasn't really adding up you know and I know the fatigue and that sort of thing and 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 nausea and headache and all that is listed are listed as well Mm -hmm. but one of the key things that is listed that you know would would be kind of like bells to go off to warrant any medical attention would is the emphasis on the whole tightening of the chest Mm -hmm. you know we all know that COVID is a respiratory disease and Mm -hmm. and therefore yes if there's tightening of the chest or you're unable to form a sentence without you know without um without pausing then Mm -hmm. that's that's a trigger Mm -hmm. now Melissa mm -hmm. just just to go back a little bit um now Reed you said that uh perfectly healthy like so no underlying issues um with reed no completely healthy almost to the point where it just i mean it put me to shame we worked out all together all the time and mm-hmm. you guys know me from all my instagram reels and stuff but mm-hmm. it's yeah we worked out he didn't smoke he ate super healthy super mm-hmm. clean mm-hmm. super active um you know anybody who sees him like he's he's he could outrun a 20 year old at 46 my you know goodness. like he just mm-hmm. was the epitome of health mm-hmm. um and so, yeah, like just it, it took a, a lot out of him. And, you know, I think a lot of us women and, and well, me, me for sure, I was just, you know, you chalk it up to a man cold and you talk, you chalk it up to them just really yeah. playing it out. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I wasn't sympathetic, but mm-hmm. it's just there was nothing that I could really do to make him comfortable. Mm-hmm. And it was one of these, you know, trying to keep him hydrated and he lost his appetite. And I didn't see that as anything but just he wasn't comfortable. Right. And so, um, instead of food, I would make him smoothies and what have you, and, and just try and give him some, something else, but he mm-hmm. just lost interest in all that. Mm-hmm. And it just, it was just weird. Like his cough again, it was, it was a really deep cough, but nothing was coming up. So it was like, he was mm-hmm. trying to cough so much that to force something out, but nothing was coming out. Mm -hmm. And then he was completely congested in the nose and in the head. And Mm -hmm. he would try and blow his nose, blow his nose so hard that nothing would come out, that even if anything did come out, it was like traces of blood. And we figured, okay, again, because he's irritating his nasal passages Uh because he's trying to blow so hard. And then, you know, we thought, okay, you know, some friends recommended um, like doing kind of like a neti rinse, like a saline flush up his nose. Yes. And uh-huh. that was instant mm-hmm. relief. And he's just like, this is great. Okay, let's do this. Is doing something. And it did release, you know, pressure from his head. Mm-hmm. And mucus did come out, again, with traces of blood, but not enough, again, to warrant concern. It wasn't like flowing. It wasn't mm-hmm. clotty. It wasn't, it wasn't anything. It was as mm-hmm. if he were to have like a typical nosebleed. Mm-hmm. And so he tried that and we just... Because there's no COVID treatment plan, mm-hmm. I, I, you don't know what to give him. So yes, I'm giving him yeah. Tylenol mm-hmm. to cold and flu to try mm-hmm. and keep him comfortable during the day and during the night. Mm-hmm. I'm giving him Benalin for his throat just to, to, to soothe it. Yes. And then I'm you know giving him Neocitrin at night just to, so that he can get some sleep. Mm-hmm. But he could never find a position that was comfortable enough. So none of those kind of helped? No, not really. I mean, oh. the Neocitrin kind of but he's always been one of these guys too and i call him superhuman because Mm -hmm. you know any procedure he's had whether it be dental or whatever and the regular Mm -hmm. anesthesia doesn't knock him out and he's woken up before in procedures so i just like i feel like he's superhuman Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what he takes it doesn't really have any effect on him so i mean i think he took it because i I was nagging at him to take it whether it really did anything for him i'll never know you know, he mm-hmm. took it because I forced him to take it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And but I still couldn't help him at night. Like he would shift from one couch to another. Then he'd shift to like a, an ottoman and like a lazy boy. And and there was he just couldn't get comfortable. So he you got know? COVID after you guys contracted. Yeah. And then that's but right. His symptoms were way worse than, than, yes. than yours. Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, just near, sort of near, nearing the end, again, he didn't warrant or fe- felt he didn't feel that we needed to seek any medical attention or even call the doctor. He was just frustrated uh-huh. that the symptoms, mm-hmm. you know, weren't getting better, but they uh-huh. weren't getting worse. It was just I kind see. of like this frustrating mm-hmm. plateau of, you know, he's just so tired. He's mm-hmm. so frustrated that he's not getting better. Mm-hmm. And we're just waiting, 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 waiting for it to, to wear its course. And mm-hmm. he's like, you and the kids, like you got through it. Like I'm going to get through it. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, yeah, you're going to get through it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You guys, we yeah. didn't tell anybody we had COVID because there's nobody to tell. Number one, Yeah. there's, guilt and there's shame and there's all the stigma that Uh is associated with COVID. And Mm -hmm. that's thanks to, you know, just public perception and media and just Mm -hmm. people who don't know Mm -hmm. it. There's so much of COVID that 
So, so you we kind don't of know. kept it in the house and just dealing with it on your own mm -hmm. and hoping to get better. I didn't better even tell and... my family. I didn't even oh. tell my parents. And mm -hmm. like, I, we tell each other everything, but I didn't want to tell them because I didn't want to worry them. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, they mm -hmm. had just gotten their vaccinations and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, because the boys and I had come away unscathed, I thought for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. As soon as Reed gets over this, then we call my parents and we can kind of not joke about it, but just mm -hmm. say, yeah, we had it. We got through we it, through it yeah. but we're fine. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. But yeah. it's just we didn't feel the need to tell anybody. It's nobody's business. Number one, we didn't need to notify the school because it was spring break. We had we hadn't seen anybody. We hadn't been there. So there was so no you, risk of exposure. So you were right? just isolating and, and just mm -hmm. trying to hold it and deal with it, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. knowing that no one else is in danger because you haven't right. gone out. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And everybody that we mm -hmm. did notify that the, the few moments I was in contact with any of their children, mm -hmm. all of my contacts, they all tested negative. So that was a relief. So That's, I know that, yeah. you know, I felt mm -hmm. I felt good about that. And, and they were all OK. Mm -hmm. um, and then as the boys and I, we were nearing the end of our isolation period. Mm -hmm. Read again, still wasn't getting any better. But mm -hmm. we get the phone call because Fraser Health does call you when you test positive, And then they call you nearing the end just to double check because oh, are, are we still symptomatic? Are mm -hmm. we not to mm -hmm. give us kind of like the clearance? So they gave us the phone call and they said, yeah, how are you and the boys? I said, we're fine. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're okay. No symptoms. They said, okay, well, you know, technically you're out of isolation now. And this is coming up the weekend of just after Easter. And so oh. my boys were supposedly going to return to school on mm -hmm. Monday, April 12th. Mm -hmm. They hadn't been the whole time since. And I thought, okay. And I, I told the person that called me, I said, well, you know, my husband, he tested positive after us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all been sort of isolating together, but he's still very sick. I said, he's so, you know, I, are you telling me that I'm, I'm still okay? Like we can go out to society and yeah. my kids can still go to school. Mm -hmm. And this is what I don't understand either. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's nobody's fault. Like I don't, I don't even, and it's not about me blaming anybody, mm -hmm. but it's just not, it's just trying to understand. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we're clear, but he's still very sick but we're still okay to go out. How do we know that we can't still pass Carry it on or whatever? And again, it's just one of these things where, I mean, I'm, I know now that we can't, we couldn't, but mm -hmm. at the time you don't know much about this virus. That's right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. before school, like Monday comes around and like, as a mom, just in good conscience, I couldn't send my kids to school with my husband being so very sick at home mm -hmm. because I don't know. Yes, I was technically given the clearance mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. and reenter society, but I just didn't feel right about it. So I kept the kids home still. And then I notified the school because I thought, you know what, full transparency, this is what we yes. had. Mm -hmm. We don't have it any longer, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to keep the kids home because mm -hmm. my husband is still very sick. Yes. Um, and please respect my privacy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And again, my community and, and my school is very good. And she said, thank you for letting us know. And, and again, it's it's our business. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, you know, wish, wish Reed a speedy recovery. Mm -hmm. That was on the Monday and... and like did, did you guys even thought? think about sending him to the hospital at that point did he want to go to the no hospital? he didn't still and again it's still and, and this is a thing that's really hard to have people understand because i have you know been attacked and and for ignoring certain signs and mm -hmm. symptoms mm -hmm. and you know could i have prevented his death mm -hmm. you don't think i don't think about this every day mm -hmm. like and mm -hmm. that i'm not ridden mm -hmm. with guilt mm -hmm. because of course like mm -hmm. as a as a as a wife or just even as a partner or as, as anyone like Especially after you guys mm -hmm. being having recovered, you know, yeah. you and your kids, you think, mm -hmm. okay, he's going to recover as well. Yeah. And did I hear you say that it wasn't the symptoms weren't getting worse? They weren't getting worse and yeah. they weren't getting better. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so it was just frustrating. He was basically just as like, you know, even if I go like, what are they going to do for me? What? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's, so mm -hmm. it's, he, that's his mentality. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Convincing mm -hmm. almost me. And then he's like, he figured it was safer to stay home than go to a hospital as mm -hmm. well at that point too, because mm -hmm. now then you're out there and there's other exposures. Yeah. yeah. So I think he also thought himself he was just going to get through this, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't call 811 until the Tuesday. And that was only because, you know, one of his buddies had said, okay, and, and this is like the one thing about dads and dad code too. Like I have gone through his phone. I've gone through all of his, the text to all of his buddies and trying to see if there was something that he wasn't telling me or something he didn't want to let me know about, right? Uh -huh. Like how mm -hmm. he was feeling and if he was dismissing anything or downplaying anything. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't. Like he told everybody the same thing, everything that he was experiencing at home with me and like what symptoms I saw and what he told me uh -huh. is exactly what he was telling all his friends. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, one of his really close friends had said, look, like if you're not getting any better, like call mm -hmm. 811 or, you know, yeah. get a doctor's mm -hmm. appointment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was then 
you know, where he's like, Hey, you know, Melissa, like, let's, can we, can we call the doctor? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Let's get a doctor's appointment going. Uh-huh. Got it for Thursday. Great. He says, okay, let's call 811. I'm like, perfect. Great. Let's call mm-hmm. 811. Mm-hmm. So we call 811 mm-hmm. and, you know, again, they go through, I guess, their script of just, okay, how are you feeling? This and that. Okay. And yeah. then they go through the basic COVID symptoms. Mm-hmm. Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you? And he's like, no, no. Or he's like, yes, 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 yes. No, I don't have tightening of the chest. And, and she says, okay, well, you know, you're not able to make a full sentence. Like your breathing wow. is labored. Uh-huh. And he says, yeah, because I can't breathe. Like my nose is completely stuffed up mm-hmm. and I have a head. Like I feel like my sinuses are all congested. Mm-hmm. And she kept asking, so you don't have any tightening of the chest? He says, no. Like he was breathing fine. He was talking. Mm-hmm. And it was just, again, it was mm-hmm. labored because he was completely plugged in his nose. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she even asked, like, okay, do, you know, do you feel that you need to seek medical attention? He says, no, I'm good. I have a doctor's appointment on Thursday. You know, my wife is hydrating me. Like, all this, it was, it was, mm-hmm. you know, nothing alarming, I, I guess, at that point. And he didn't want to go, mm-hmm. and so we didn't. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Right? And she asked what I was giving him. And again, I, all, everything that I just... Yeah, mm-hmm. I told you, I said, I'm not a nurse, obviously, yeah. and but mm-hmm. I'm doing whatever I can just mm-hmm. to make him comfortable. Um, and, you know, that, and that was pretty was much it. I guess it was harder for him seeing that the wife and the kids have recovered. It was harder for him to go to the hospital thinking, okay, these guys went through it. They oh, recovered. Sure. Now I'm going to mm-hmm. get through it, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and I really do that? thought mm-hmm. he it's thought like, that okay. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. 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 Another day, okay, another day, okay, another day. I'm not getting any yeah. worse. Mm-hmm. So yes. if anything, it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I human mean, nature. It is human nature. Mm-hmm. We're all guilty of it. I mean, we're all very much like, you know what? I got this. I got this. I don't need to go. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking mm-hmm. any pills. You know mm-hmm. what? I would do the same thing as Reed. I really mm-hmm. would. I would. So I wouldn't do any of, I wouldn't go either. So. I understand. Yeah. So, so how many days was he into this um, now? Like this is a week. Wow. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like on the fourth, he got the results, I believe, and mm-hmm. then yeah, well, over that. So then it was like, a, just over a week and a day, where nothing was getting better, nothing was getting worse. Uh-huh. And then he's like, okay, let's call. Like, let's just. This is ridiculous now. Let Let's see if something can make me comfortable, and mm-hmm. and some somebody can do something. Mm-hmm. And it was too late. Like it was just the night before he passed. You know, so, um, so he didn't. He's... So I'm so sorry to mm-hmm. hear that. I'm so sorry. Um, and I'm so sorry to ask you these questions because mm-hmm. I'm sure I, I, mm-hmm. it is painful. Um, and I feel it's I don't have words. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but so he didn't go to the hospital mm-hmm. and he was a week into this. Mm-hmm. Um so did it get worse? Like what happened after that? Like before he passed away, when did he pass away? Yeah. So again, it, 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 it was sudden because that after we had spoken to the nurse on the Tuesday, that night, um, actually in that morning, it's I, again, timing. So my parents had reached out because they had heard that, you know, Reed was ill and he was off work for a week and mm-hmm. that's not like him mm-hmm. not answering any calls or texts from my dad. Like they're very close. Mm-hmm. And I had to call my mom and I said, you know what, we didn't want to worry you, but we have COVID or we had it like the boys and I are over it, but mm-hmm. Reed has it and he's really sick. Mm-hmm. I said, but we didn't want to worry you and mm-hmm. you know him like he's going to bounce back and, yeah. and what mm-hmm. have you. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll just I'll, I'll keep you updated. But just please, again, also respect our privacy and, and just we'll get through this and I'll, I'll keep you updated. Mm-hmm. But I hadn't even told my parents like until like the day before. Mm-hmm. Unbeknownst to me that the next time I speak to them, I have to let them know that their yes. son-in-law has passed. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So that uh-huh. Tuesday night, you know, um, he's fine during the day. Same thing, just, you know, on the couch watching TV. Nothing completely out of the ordinary. Like just again, he wasn't eating as much. He would only eat half of a smoothie, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it wasn't nothing to me was just like, oh, my goodness, like what's going on? He's just he's stubborn, too. And. You know, he would drink whatever I, I put in front of him, and, mm-hmm. and I, you think that that's okay. And then that night, um, he was sitting up, and the boy said good night to him. And then I came over, and you know, he was talking to me, and, and mm-hmm. I just I gave him all his meds. I, I laid everything out on the table, and mm-hmm. I, I put it out, and and I said, "Can I get you anything?" And he says, "No." And I said, "Are you sure?" And he said, "Yeah, I got everything." And then you know, I just it's one of these things too, where it, I mean, it, some time has gone by, but I'll never ever forgive myself and I know I have to it's just 
you know, when you try and help somebody and they don't mm -hmm. want help mm -hmm. or, you know, and it doesn't matter yeah. if it's a friend, it's your family member, mm -hmm. it's your, your, your partner. Mm -hmm. it, it's frustrating too, but to be like turned away mm -hmm. and just yeah. be like, and then you, you almost get to a point where it's like, okay, fine. You know what? Mm -hmm. It's there if you want it there, if you need it, mm -hmm. I'm not going to force it down your throat, but it's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, it was, it was a feeling of a bit of frustration because mm -hmm. I get it too. I was frustrated that, you know, we were trying our best to get them better and nothing was happening, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? But you don't think that you're not going to have the next day. Yes. Yeah. And all I did is I, I laid out his medicine and then I said, okay, if you've got everything, good night, mm -hmm. you know? And I didn't say I love you. And that's mm -hmm. the hardest thing. And oh. every night before that, we always say, I love you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, I just, I said, good night. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I went to bed. Mm -hmm. I went to bed and I didn't think to check throughout the night just because so he was where you went to bed. Where was he at that time? He was bedroom? sitting on the, he was sitting upright on the couch where he'd okay. been uh, resting for the past few days prior. Cause he couldn't, oh, okay. he couldn't, you know, he didn't have any energy to make it to our bedroom. Okay. And I just figured it was more comfortable for him, the bathroom mm -hmm. and like everything mm -hmm. was just sort of yeah, on one yeah. level for him. Mm -hmm. And when I said goodnight to him, he was just, he was sitting upright. He was mm -hmm. fine. He was talking to me. Yeah. And then I go to sleep and in the morning I come down and he was lying down. He was lying down on the couch okay. and the blanket was pulled all the way up, mm -hmm. you know, to his neck and his yeah. hand was up like this. And he was, he was just sleeping because that's how he sleeps. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The first instinct to me was like, wow, like he actually got some rest. I was that's so ex rest. like mm -hmm. happy for him uh -huh. that he actually slept, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I went over there and, and then I, and then, then I touched his arm that was out. Right. And mm -hmm. then, and then he was cold. Mm. And then I said, okay, and then I agreed. And then like, I, I tried to like shake him and then mm -hmm. I tried to move his arm, but I, I couldn't move his arm. Mm -hmm. And that's when I panicked. And then that's when I'm looking at his chest. Yeah. And I, and, and, I, and I, you look and you look and you look and you swear you see it moving, you swear. Yes. And then I look under the blanket and his body's still warm under the blanket. Like his mm -hmm. body was warm under the blanket. It was just his arm. And like his face, it was cold. Because it wasn't covered, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't have the blanket. And anymore. this is what I'm thinking, yeah. right? And so mm -hmm. I didn't think. Mm -hmm. But when I couldn't move his arm, and then I didn't see his chest, it was when I, like, when I, it's when I pulled his eyelids back, and he was unresponsive. Oh, that's goodness. when I, that's when I called 911. So Where called were the boys at that time, Melissa? They were upstairs, mm -hmm. and my one son, my, old, my eldest was awake, and he came down, and he heard me on the phone with 911. Mm -hmm. And I think he he just had heard not breathing. And so he came down. He said, Mom, is Dad going to the hospital? Because he's not breathing. And all I could say to him was, yes. Can I ask upstairs. how old the boys are, Melissa? Yeah, my oldest just turned 11 on Monday and my youngest is eight. Oh, goodness. And he's, he was still sleeping at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So I, I had my older one go back upstairs and just wait there. So I have 911 on my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm calling my neighbors on Reed's phone. Mm -hmm. I'm calling just anybody to come get here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when 911 answers, what's your emergency? I, all I can say is I think my husband's dead. Oh, goodness. You know, and, and, and to me, like, it's not that even that I, I, I thought to administer CPR or anything because mm -hmm. I had, like, you could, you could tell, like, it just, mm -hmm. you know, and his arm not, I couldn't move his arm, couldn't see his chest moving. I'm shaking him and there was, there was nothing. And again, because his eyes just, they were unresponsive. They were just like, there was nothing there. I, I didn't. And so when 911 said, do you think he's beyond resuscitation? I said, yes. Oh, wow. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, it's, it's just sort of like a blur because everything after that just yes. was so kind of yeah. procedural. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's COVID or not COVID, but it's just, you know, the police came, paramedics came, everybody's in full hazmat suits and mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just, you know, make sure I didn't move anything, mm -hmm. touch anything, mm -hmm. you know, as if it's kind of a crime scene, but it, it, you know, like you just don't know. And I just didn't leave him the whole time. I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm still rubbing his legs. I'm still like, you know, like trying to mm -hmm. pinch the soles of his bare feet mm -hmm. to see if like, you know, if there's going to be something and he's just, he's there, he was, he was gone. Wow. Right. And so I got, we got my kids out of the house. And so they just were able to go right by him and, and just kind of see him lying there. And, and he really did just look peaceful. And then I had them over at neighbor's house. And then while mm -hmm. the whole process of people coming in and out, checking on him, the body removal, people coming to take my husband away. Mm -hmm. And they took him away in a body mm -hmm. bag. How, how oh, did wow. you feel at that? Like, I know you were numb. Mm -hmm. <sighs> uh, 
it, I don't, I don't, and I don't even know. Like I just, the, I, I don't even know the hours and the, the, the minutes that go mm-hmm. by. And I just still the whole time I'm just rubbing his legs and still just like poking his feet and just, I just not thinking that this is, this is happening, you know? And it was until the paramedics had come in and they checked his pulse, his wrist, and then they checked up here. And then he had said, okay, you can make those phone calls. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm sorry, what do you, what do you mean? What phone calls? Mm -hmm. And it was until he said, sorry for your loss is when it was like, he's really passed, you know, but you go into a bit of a denial Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't and, want and to you sit there it. and mm-hmm. and you know there's there's no way and and like I you know we were just talking the night before and how how is this possible and mm-hmm. and he's just sleeping and mm-hmm. how yeah. uh, how can it just happen right mm-hmm. so oh, I mean that's life is just too short so, hey life it is and that's why is, you know I say to everybody so I say you know like you hug your loved ones, you tell mm. your loved ones you mm. love them all of the mm. time. Mm. You never know. I literally thought we had yeah. the next day. Mm-hmm. And you don't ever know, right? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, Melissa, I, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, we've worked together, we've known each other for a really mm-hmm. long time. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, through the good, through the bad. Um, I just am, you know, I, I know you're a very strong woman. And, you know, and for you to be able to share this story, you know, it just means a lot to each and every one of us. Like, you know, it's it's not easy. And I know that, you know, it really shook us hard. You know, we know you so well and and a lot of people do because you're so well known, you know, within the community, outside of the community. I mean, you do dreams take flight. You make little kids dreams come true that are you know, it's just, you're just such a beautiful person. And you know what? And for me, I I apologize. I'm going to probably get a little bit emotional. And it's only because, you know what? You mean a lot to me. And you Mm -hmm. mean, you know, you coming on and sharing the story to our South Asian community. It, it's, it's huge. It's huge because, you know, we think that we know the right things about COVID. And these are our personal opinions. You know, Mm -hmm. we all go through the protocol and we all, you know, we all think, oh, we got this, we got this. We can just, you know, we, you know, there's no symptoms here. There's no this, but look what you just went through. And you're sharing that, you know, for us to know, you know, and, and, you know, I just want to, I don't even, I'm so mute right now because for me, it's, I, I'm not going to lie, like it really shook us. It shook me hard. You know, that could be Tat, you know, that mm-hmm. could have been any one it of us. It could be one of us, exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow, Melissa. Uh, and I mean, those there's... two boys too, like, I mean, you're you're very grounded and, you know, and I mean, if there's anything we can do as a community for you, like anything at mm. all, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. And, um, and you know what, and there is a lot of love. There's actually a comment here that's um, from one of our, um, you know, listeners here, um, Jessica Lal. She says, my deepest condolences to you and the boys, Melissa, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of messages from Aeroplan itself, Jazz, Garsha, Val. I mean, you know, a lot of people there, Heather, you know, um, you know, it's just a lot of people, Delicia, like, I mean, you name it. I mean, people have been reaching out and saying that this is huge. This is amazing that you're bringing her on to share the story. I know this is not easy for you. No, I mean, it takes a lot of courage takes, to, to come out and yeah. share and talk about what you've already been through mm-hmm. and to go through it again. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, Melissa. And I, I wish we could do something to ease your pain, to take the mm-hmm. pain away um and and hearing your story Mm -hmm. i like like praveen said don't even have words so i can only imagine i can't even imagine Mm -hmm. what you know you went through what you're going through right now and how fast life can just change and and again this is the reason why you know i debated and it's not that i went out seeking okay fame and like whatever Mm -hmm. i've been attacked socially on social media and just people thinking like why would i do this and uh, you know i'm going out and seeking media attention i did not you know i i received messages of condolences from some of my friends in the media industry 
And again, it was all that, just offering their condolences. Mm -hmm. Same thing as you. Is there anything that we can do? I said, you know what? I'm Mm -hmm. just numb. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And I literally just put a bug in like in the air just to say, you know what? I'm just so mad. Mm -hmm. I'm just so angry Mm -hmm. because of the not knowing. And ladies, I have to just say like, it's been a fight, you know, at Mm -hmm. the end, Mm -hmm. I didn't want to accept that my husband is a statistic. He Mm -hmm. had COVID. He's now dead from Mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. completely healthy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand it and accept the fact that a 46 year old healthy man Mm -hmm. was, was going to die. And you Mm -hmm. ask if he had underlying issues. Mm -hmm. I was hoping and praying, you know what, you tell me that he had a brain tumor. You Mm -hmm. tell me that there was something that triggered his death so suddenly. That would have at least given something. Mm -hmm. But ladies, just so you know, and this is for everybody to know out there Mm -hmm. that if anybody passes away at home, positive COVID positive, and you pass away at home, there is no autopsy. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're denied that right. And hmm. it's a blanket policy. Oh, wow. um, and again, it's, it's, this is what I was, I was told and I refused to accept it. I said, you know what? I, I cannot, like I have two so, children. Mm-hmm. My husband mm-hmm. was an only child. Mm-hmm. Both of his parents are deceased. You know, if there's anything genetic that could have, you know, sort of led to this or triggered mm-hmm. something, I need to know. Mm-hmm. And my GP, amazing. She went above and beyond to try and, and, and help me. She was also bound by policies and procedures, mm-hmm. you know, within the province of, of, of trying to fight this and, you know, the best that we could get. Uh, and I'm so grateful for her is a postmortem chest x-ray. So this is like days after Reed has passed. He's been kind of like shuffled from this hospital to this funeral home now to this mm-hmm. hospital. And here, like just at one point, I didn't even know where he was. Mm-hmm. And then no. he ended up at Royal Columbian where a pathologist um, performed a postmortem chest x-ray. I said, I'll take it, you know? Mm-hmm. And they said, mm-hmm. still, we cannot perform an autopsy. I said, just give me something, give mm-hmm. me something. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it was the results from the chest x-ray that did say that yes, from he died due complications of COVID and COVID gave him the, bilateral pneumonia which is what killed him Mm -hmm. and again it being a respiratory disease you know after hearing that it's hard because it's like okay if I'd known then the symptoms of pneumonia Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right then Mm -hmm. maybe I I backtrack and looked at that then maybe I would have gone in sooner and and Mm -hmm. maybe this and maybe that and then maybe I could have saved him but I can't do the what ifs and I can't do the maybes right yeah because literally overnight Mm -hmm. his left chest or his left lung was completely whited out and the right lung was 80%. And -hmm. that was like, he didn't even know that he was going to take his last breath. Mm -hmm. He just lied down, went to sleep, took his last breath at some point Mm -hmm. and his lungs just gave out. Even if I had taken him to the hospital, the outcome would have been the same, I'm told. Mm -hmm. So at least he passed in our home where my kids could say goodbye and I could say goodbye. Uh If he had passed in a hospital, I mean, again, it would have been even just something Mm -hmm. worse. There's, Mm -hmm. there's no way. Mm -hmm. But I'm but sharing Melissa, this story you can because, go back. Mm-hmm. You can go sorry? back and say, "Oh, I could, I should have done. Mm-hmm. Had I done this, had I done that." But you did the best you could mm-hmm. given the I circumstances. Know. You did. You did the best you could, and you know what? There are, like you said, um, that night I didn't say I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys loved each other. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, that love was. I mean, and Melissa, everybody that knows you and, and, you know, and all the listeners now too, I mean, you, you did everything and, and everybody knew you guys were a family of love. I mean, Mm -hmm. your every single Mm -hmm. post, Mm -hmm. every social media, anything that you ever did, you included your husband, you included those kids, you included, that was love. Like you guys had love. And I believe in that, you know what, don't wait till the last minute when it's too late or don't wait till the last minute to tell each other that you love me. It Mm -hmm. should be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would say, my dear, don't try to beat yourself up on Mm -hmm. that Mm because you know what? You're human. You're human. You did the best you could. If you had anything else you could do, you would have done it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hang in there. If there's anything, even if you need to talk to us at any time, feel free to give us a call. We're here, mm-hmm. you know, anything we can do, just ask. Um, I wish we could change the circumstances. Um, if we could, we would, but mm-hmm. you know what? Just just, so, just know that we are here for you. Mm-hmm. Thank and, you. And you are a strong person. You have two beautiful boys. 
to look after now you know you have to look after yourself you have to remember that you come first you know and then your boys are there with you you have to be strong for them it's easy for us to say be strong but being in those shoes you know only you can relate to what you're going through mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we're here for you we're here for your support anything mm-hmm. you need we could do the best we can and i'm very 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 sorry to hear that you know you went through this and uh and and I can't even imagine what you're yeah. going through right now. And I also just... want to add that you know people that are that are attacking, you know, socially, you know, it, it, it's just uncalled for. It doesn't need to happen and this is my personal opinion. And you know what? It does not need to happen. I mean, there's a woman here, a strong individual, you know, coping and sharing her story so someone else is being educated out there to know that what these symptoms that we're supposed to you know follow the regulations and the symptoms that um so-called covid symptoms you know could not you know may not be present at the time you know and that's what this is all about this is not about anything other than you know what her being so strong for those kids Mm -hmm and sharing that information mm-hmm. so other mm-hmm. people will not suffer mm-hmm. the way she is exactly. suffering right now yeah. and you should yeah. be proud of yourself should you be proud should of be yourself very proud we're proud of you. you are and what you're doing i yeah. just you know thank you and, and literally that is my objective throughout this whole thing like i am getting positive feedback and mm-hmm. messages and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i know that reads death is not in vain because mm-hmm. like i had people just strangers yeah. messaging me young families Mm -hmm. you know and she said my husband had these and we went in and and we were we went in and he because he had similar symptoms Mm -hmm. and they had detected onset pneumonia for the husband Mm -hmm. but they caught it in time Mm -hmm. they were able to give him oxygen oxygen he was able Mm -hmm. to recover Mm -hmm. you know selfishly i'm like okay you know, like you don't wish anything ill on anybody, no, right? Like I know again, reading death don't. is not in vain because yeah. it's saving yeah. other people. So and if people can remember. learn from my mistakes, then that's just that's just my objective. You guys, but, COVID doesn't discriminate. You know, Melissa, you, you that story right him, there, though. that story right there, that that person that went in because they heard your story, they heard what you had to say. That one person is going to relate to another person. That's a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. And just remember that. Remember what a beautiful thing that is. Like, because that there, you just saved a life. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how many more people Mm -hmm. now are going to take this seriously. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen people that are like, oh, it's not going to happen to me. Oh, it's not going to happen to me. Right. And, And we're all human. We all react to these things in a different way. But at least, at least mm-hmm. now people will hear your story and they will be extra cautious. Mm-hmm. Right? So, so just hang in there and, uh, and you have to remember that you, your husband had a choice as well. You yeah. know, you didn't stop him from going to the hospital. He yeah. saw you guys get better. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he was thinking of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So could we change the situation? No. No. Um, people that are talking they are not in your shoes so anytime anyone picks on you or says anything just remember that they were not in your shoes yeah right um they are talking from Mm -hmm. what they see what they experience but they are not there with you Mm -hmm. they are not you they weren't in your house dealing with this with two boys and and yourself that had COVID, and then your husband Mm -hmm. having COVID. so People that are talking, people will talk. We mm-hmm. cannot stop anyone. These yeah. are our opinion. This is my opinion. Yeah. But you, you have to, you have to carry on with your life. Yes. And uh, you have to look after your family. No yeah. one's gonna come in there and take care of you all day. It's you now. You yeah. are there, right? And, yeah. And you, you have to be there for those boys. Mm-hmm. Um, now I did hear the boys in the background. Yeah. Oh, he was here. Yeah. 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 That's sweet. He's checking in on his mom. That's mm-hmm. what oh, a but sweet. But that's the hard life. thing too. And you talk about being strong, and all they do is like, uh, they see mommy crying, right? Mm-hmm. And I try, and I go away, and and we are, you know, seeking counsel, and and mm-hmm. I'm, I've got them in with counselors, and and me included. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's hard, like. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say you can't cry and you can't be sad because my oldest mm-hmm. hasn't cried since the day oh, it wow. happened. It's been three weeks because wow. really he's angry. The mm-hmm. only 
feeling that he is, is it, 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 he's mad that mm-hmm. why is it his death, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so... Remember, they're young. They don't understand right now, right? Yeah. They, they, they're not... Yeah, they're very young right now. But, you um, know, you're doing a good thing. You're taking them to counseling. Mm-hmm. You know what? Yeah. They're going to give them... You know, the, the grieving... The grief, um, you know, the grieving process is not easy. And especially when they're angry, you know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of un questions that, you know, they have and they won't answer. So, you know what, Melissa, you're doing the right thing. You know, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm really proud, you know, to be a, a friend to you and, and to have you amongst, um, you know, um, you know, in my circle. And, you know, you are absolutely inspiring, amazing. You are such a beautiful mom. Mm-hmm you know, and such a beautiful friend to so many people, you know, you show one love all the time at all times. And you know what? I can't thank you enough Mm -hmm. for coming on air and sharing Mm -hmm. this beautiful story. Like, I mean, you know, and I say beautiful, I know that it's, it's bittersweet for you. Like, you know, like, I mean, you know, but for us, you know, like it's, it's an eye opener. It's an eye opener. And thank uh, you so much for coming yeah, out. It is. And, and sharing this and, and no spreading problem. the news in the community. Mm-hmm. It is sad news, but at least this will help save someone else. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Melissa, for taking mm-hmm. your time out, having the courage. No, I appreciate you ladies for, for spreading my message and everybody get vaccinated, wear yeah. a mask just mm-hmm. stay safe it, yeah. it can happen to anybody we're not invincible yeah. yeah thank you for that yeah that was my last thing i wanted to close it out with that yeah. like to ask no. you you know what yeah. what what kind of message i mean what message yeah. do you want people to have you know and to hear and and you just said it you know um in your opinion i mean get the vaccine and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. be safe yeah well, that's, be safe. that's exactly yeah. it i mean most people are already doing it mm-hmm. but i just Mm -hmm. I'm only just reiterating that Mm -hmm. and just, you know, even if our province isn't going to force a lockdown, Mm -hmm. just know what our boundaries are, Mm -hmm. know what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do because, Mm -hmm. yeah, we are not invincible and it doesn't discriminate. So I, I, yeah, just everybody stay safe, please. Thank you, Melissa. Thank Thank you you so much. And um, and a happy birthday to, uh, to your guy. Yeah, I know. It's, 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 it was very special these these past few days and Mm -hmm. and trying to still celebrate his birthday during this time of Mm -hmm. sorrow. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Reed's birthday is coming up next Friday. That's going to be another, Mm -hmm. another hurdle. And it's just going to be one day at Mm -hmm. a time, right? Then Father's Day Mm -hmm. after that. And then Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, but I know I have you know, community, I've got you yes. guys, I've mm-hmm. got yeah. people around us that mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not alone, you know, and I know that's, that. That's good. That's, so, I'm glad thank you, you feel that way, that you're not alone. And, and by the mm-hmm. way, happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day is coming mm-hmm. up soon. Yeah. Happy Mother's thank Day. You. Mother's Day. Hang thank in you. there, Melissa. Um, it's uh, unfortunate that we had to meet this way. It's the first time I've met you. You're beautiful. It's okay. You're strong and always here for you. Just a phone call away. Thank you, and I want to say I love you, and and take mm-hmm. care, mm-hmm. and uh, hang in there. You're not alone. You're not alone. We're with you. Okay. Thank you very right. much. Thank yeah. you, Melissa. Okay. Thanks, much Melissa. Love. Thanks okay, for Vinaka. taking your time okay. out and joining mm-hmm. us today. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Bye. Bye. So you're listening to Radio Bula Masti. I'm your host Aisha, and we have uh, Pepper. Pepper Prasad. here, Prasad, uh, Praveen, Pepper mm-hmm. Prasad mm-hmm. with us, <laughs> and. Uh, you just heard the story of uh, Melissa Hans, who just uh, who lost her husband due mm-hmm. to COVID, and um, condolences uh, to the family. And uh, uh, just stay safe out there. Don't mm-hmm. think that it might not happen to you. It could happen to anyone, anywhere, anytime. So please be very, very careful, mm-hmm. and uh, stay tuned to Radio Bula Masti dot com. And uh, Praveen will carry on with our regular program now. Thanks again for listening in. And please do share this video Mm -hmm. so we can pass um, the message around of how dangerous this uh, uh, virus is and Mm -hmm. what it can do to us. Uh, Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Julie Singh, thank you again for joining. Jessica, thanks for your message and your condolence. Julie, you're saying condolences to the family. Thank you once again. You're tuned into RadioBulamasti.com.